Hello and welcome. My name is Peter Kurtzels. I'm head of diabetes research with Novo Nordisk. I'm here today to discuss with you how uh, we can successfully develop an insulin tablet. I'm sure you're all aware that insulin is used to treat diabetes. And the burden of diabetes in our world today is actually huge. We're talking about millions of people across the world who are affected by diabetes. And it's a serious disease. It's a chronic disease and it's also affected with uh, a, a variety of uh, serious complications, such as cardiovascular risk, such as renal disease, and uh, so that, such as eye disease, blindness, amputations are often caused by in-stage diabetes. So it's something that we need to do something about. It's also a growing uh, concern that diabetes is affecting more and more people. If we look 20 years ahead, we believe that almost 500 million people will be affected by diabetes worldwide. And the ultimate treatment of diabetes is insulin. Let's look at the various forms of diabetes as we have them. Diabetes is really caused by a lack of insulin or insufficient insulin production in the body. So in this uh, slide, I've shown insulin production along the y-axis and time from diagnosis along the x-axis. And you can see there are two types of diabetes. First type one, that's a type of diabetes that is typically affecting people already in childhood. And in, in type 1 diabetes, insulin production is completely lost from the beginning. And therefore, people with type 1 diabetes must be treated with insulin to survive already, already from diagnosis of disease. In contrast to that, another type of diabetes is type 2 diabetes. And when you are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, you still have uh, some uh, insulin production left in your body, maybe 50% of what is needed. And therefore, in the early stages of uh, type 2 diabetes, you can treat yourself with what we call diet and exercise. Uh, you see a, a person here on the cycle that can help in the early stages of disease. And then typically, people after diagnosis with type 2 diabetes will be taking tablets in the early stages of disease. But then, as, uh, as insulin production gradually declines, the endogenous insulin production in the end stage of disease, even people with type 2 diabetes will need to be treated with insulin. And starting insulin treatment is not easy. And that's why uh, many uh, of people with type 2 diabetes are actually reluctant to start on insulin. We've seen in many surveys conducted in various settings that insulin is, uh, is difficult to start. All people with diabetes will need to be treated with insulin. And as I'm sure you are aware, insulin treatment today is given by injection. And for many, uh, that's regarded as being fairly difficult uh, to start. And that, for example, because you have to make decisions on how to inject, uh, where to inject, you have to get accustomed to the needle. And although our needles today are very fine and very short, actually about five millimeters uh, long and almost uh, so thin that you can't see them, is still regarded as a burden that you have to use a, a needle in order to inject yourself with insulin. And that's why we believe that uh, if we could make an insulin tablet, that would make insulin treatment much easier and people would be less reluctant to start treatment with insulin. In many surveys that we have conducted or others have conducted across the world in various settings, we've seen that it's actually true that people with type 2 diabetes, they are uh, reluctant to start insulin. One example in a study that we conducted here at Novo Nordisk uh, showed that 57% of people with type 2 diabetes in this particular survey, they were worried about starting insulin. And we believe that some of that worry is related to uh, the need for injection. So what we want to do is uh, to develop an insulin tablet. And, uh, and uh, this is what could be the end result of, uh, of such a research activity. And these tablets uh, that I have here brought today is actually tablets that uh, also is composed of, of insulin. And uh, we're not the first ones who have tried to, to develop an insulin tablet. Actually, there's been a desire to do so already back in the 1920s when, in, when insulin was first discovered. And actually, I think that the first dose ever given to a human being of insulin was actually an insulin tablet. It failed to work. But the tablets that, that we uh, are developing today, we really want these to work as well as insulin uh, given by injection. And as you can see here, there's been a lot of attempts with various technologies being utilized over these uh, 
almost 10 decades, 100 years that has passed since the discovery of insulin. But no one has so far been successful in, in getting all the way uh, through to a successful uh, insulin tablet. And uh, apart from being more easy to take, then there's another benefit that we may have by giving insulin as a tablet. And that is that in some way you can say that giving insulin as a tablet would be more natural, we call it more physiological, than giving insulin by injections. That's because when insulin is secreted in a normal healthy uh, uh, individual, insulin is secreted from the pancreas and then directly uh, goes to the liver as the first target organ and then only after, after having passed through the liver is uh, continuing into the, what we call the peripheral tissues, that's muscle and fat, uh, where insulin is used as a fuel. But the first organ to be targeted by insulin in the, uh, in the physiology is really the liver. And uh, what we could accomplish by giving insulin as a tablet is to mimic that perfectly by giving insulin into what we call the portal circulation, that's the blood uh, vessels that go uh, from uh, the gut, the gastrointestinal tract, directly to the liver, and therefore we would mimic the natural uh, uh, physiology of insulin delivery better with a tablet than with an injection. So that's another benefit that we could have from giving insulin as a tablet rather than from uh, an injection. Why is it then that it is so difficult to develop an insulin tablet? And that's because of primarily two things. Uh, number one, uh, uh, insulin is a, a, a protein. And a protein, as you know, as we have it in meat and when we eat and in milk and so on, is naturally degraded in the gastrointestinal tract. And therefore, insulin is also naturally degraded in the gastrointestinal tract. So that's the first barrier. And the second barrier is that uh, insulin is also a fairly large molecule. And that means it's very difficult for insulin to pass from the, uh, from the intestine and into the bloodstream, where we have to give it in order for it to, affect, uh, to, to elicit its biological activity. So we have two main barriers. One is the susceptibility of insulin to be broken down. And secondly, is uh, that we have to assist insulin in getting across uh, the, 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 the epithelial wall in the intestine and into the bloodstream. And let's look at the first barrier. Insulin, uh, as I say, is degraded in the gastrointestinal tract, both by the acidic environment in the stomach, but also and primarily by digestive enzymes that are secreted from the pancreas into the intestine. And, uh, and that means that we have to overcome those, uh, those barriers as well as possible. And we believe that it takes uh, different technologies to overcome that barrier. Uh, first of all, we have to get the, uh, the right insulin molecule. We also have to uh, uh, get it into the right type of tablet. And we probably also have to produce quite large quantities of insulin in order to uh, have sufficient uh, that will survive in the uh, rough environment of the gastrointestinal tract. But when we get there, if we are successful in protecting at least part of the insulin uh, from being broken down in the gut, then the surface area that we have in the intestine is huge. Actually, it's uh, almost the size of a large house. Uh, you can see here the, the major parts for absorption of the gastrointestinal tract or the intestine uh, sums up to a surface area of almost 500 square meters. So it's a very large surface area that we have available for absorption if we can get insulin uh, in undegraded form down to that area of the intestine. If we take a closer look to, at the second barrier, which is that insulin has to be taken up uh, from the interior of the intestine and into the bloodstream, meaning that insulin has to cross uh, the intestinal wall, going from the interior of the gut, as we can see it here, and then to the exterior of the intestine and passing into the bloodstream, and as I mentioned, uh, then going directly to the liver. Uh, if we look at that barrier, let's look at that in a little more detail. So when insulin go, uh, it, uh, it has been taken as a tablet, it would eventually end up in the intestine. And here we have the large surface area that it would hit and then would have to cross over that uh, uh, wall and into the bloodstream. If we look at that in a close-up, you can see that uh, the large surface area of the intestine is, uh, is, uh, is um, made by these uh, folds that we have in the intestinal uh, wall. And you can see on the outer uh, part of it, you have the intestinal compartment, 
and on the inner side here you have the blood vessels. So we have to have insulin to cross across to co uh, go across from the interior to the exterior. And if we look at that in even more detail, you can see that the, the, this wall that we have to cross is composed of individual cells, epithelial cells, that also are folded, by the way, to provide this huge surface area. And insulin then has to go from the, from the, from the inner part of the intestine, either between cells or uh, across cells into the bloodstream and then be transported by the blood as you can see, blood vessels, larger and larger blood vessels, eventually end up, ending up in what we call the portal circulation and into the liver as the first target organ of, uh, of insulin. So uh, what we have to successfully accomplish is then that insulin is, is transported from the interior of the intestine and then into the, into the circulation. And that's difficult because insulin is such a large molecule, so it doesn't happen just uh, on its own. So how, how is it then that we overcome these uh, barriers that we have uh, for, for, for the insulin tablet? Well, we believe that we have to develop a new type of insulin that survives better in the rough environment in the intestine, and maybe it's also transported better across the wall. And secondly, we have to develop a new technology that will facilitate uptake of this insulin molecule from the intestine and into the bloodstream. And how far are we then with accomplishing that goal? Well, let's look at that. First, let's look at the insulin molecule and what we can do to uh, engineer or construct or design a more stable insulin molecule. This is a cartoon that shows you the structure of the insulin as a protein. Each, uh, each ball here is representing an amino acid, and insulin is con composed of 51 amino acids ar arranged in two chains. And uh, some of these uh, amino acid uh, uh, linkages uh, peptide bonds, as we call them, can be cleaved by enzymes, as I just discussed with you. And uh, we can actually map which areas of the insulin molecule are most labile uh, to enzymatic degradation. And then we can uh, uh, exchange one amino acid for another in order to stabilize the insulin towards enzymatic degradation. And that's exactly step one in what we try to do in making an insulin molecule that's better suited for being given as a tablet. Uh, the second uh, part of, uh, of the barrier has to be overcome, maybe also by a new insulin molecule, but we have to assist it also with adding in other substances into the tablet that will facilitate absorption of insulin from the gut into the bloodstream. So what we want to accomplish is that we can take insulin eventually, and, uh, and that insulin would then be uh, in a form that would make it fairly stable in the GI tract, so that it will go uh, intact through uh, the, the stomach into the intestine and there release its contents. And that uh, content is insulin and then what we call absorption enhancers. That's compounds or molecules that have the special feature of assisting uh, transport over a biological membrane. Uh, typical enhancer substances are compounds that both have hydrophilic and lipophilic uh, 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 characteristics. And, and those compounds have this ability to, for example, open uh, the contact points between uh, epithelial cells in the membrane so that insulin as a large molecule can be transported more easily across that membrane. So uh, this is what we want to accomplish uh, by then formulating a new insulin molecule with a new enhancer technology. So we've come quite far in identifying which of these enhancer substances are good at uh, facilitating absorption of specifically an insulin molecule. Uh, but uh, all of this may be uh, working well in a test tube, but uh, we have to test it out also, of course, in, in whole bodies. So what we first do when we conduct this type of research is uh, do whatever we can to working with the insulin molecule. This is actually a cartoon of an insulin molecule and working with how the insulin molecule interacts with these absorption enhancers. We'll test that maybe even in cell systems. And then we would continue into doing animal experiments that could be in a rat, could also be in a mouse, or could be in a dog or in a pig, uh, because we have to get an understanding how this system uh, will work in a whole body before we take it into man. And ultimately, having concluded on these animal experiments, we would continue 
to conducting experiments in what we call clinical trials, that's uh, exploration first in normal healthy volunteers and then later on in, in patients. So ultimately, insulin, uh, an insulin tablet has to be successful in all these steps from the laboratory and the test tube into the animals and then all the way into clinical trials before being registered and approved for the treatment of people with type 2 diabetes. That's of course a very long uh, journey. It's a long research process. It's also a very costly process. And actually you can compare the size of the investment that we are uh, trying to make uh, in order to be successful to bring insulin as a tablet forward to people with diabetes. You can compare that almost to the size of investment that it took to build uh, the first really big bridge in Denmark, the bridge over the Great Belt that uh, connects two of the main islands in this country. At least we're talking about a double digit sum of money counted in billions of Danish kroner. And then the difference between building a bridge and uh, conducting research into making an insulin tablet is that when you build a bridge, you're almost certain that you'd also finalize successfully. Whereas when you set out to develop an insulin tablet, you have to do your best, you have to make your investment, but you can never be certain that you will also be successful in accomplishing your goal. We've set out to try to do what we can to make sure that insulin treatment for people with, di with diabetes will be as easy as possible in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.